Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rhiannon and as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, today I'm bringing you guys my August book haul. Now, as was the case with last month, I was doing so well with my book buying, guys. I hadn't bought too many books and I thought I was gonna go into September not adding a lot more books to my TBR. However, I've had so many parcels turn up at my door this week that I've decided to film an unboxing video for you guys. So I'm pretty sure that that video is going up after this one, but they are all books that arrived in the last week of August, which is typical, but I didn't want to open them and include them in this video because I personally love watching book unboxing videos and I thought why not just give you guys two videos. This one can be a sit down haul where I show you guys the books that I have purchased or been sent throughout the month and then the unboxing video can be a bit more of a fun one. So hopefully that's okay with you guys. If you are looking forward to that please do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you have the notification bell switched on so that you don't miss that upload. But other than that I don't want to waffle on any longer so let's dive into the books. Now now, the first book I have to show you guys today was actually sent to me by Nathan, so thank you so so much Nathan. I am honestly blown away because that book is The Atlas of Tolkien's Middle Earth by Karen Wynne Fonstad. This is exactly what it says on the tin, it shows you so many different locations from some of Tolkien's different works and I haven't spoken about it for a while on my channel, but for those of you guys who don't know, I am pretty much a obsessed with The Lord of the Rings and all of Tolkien's works. The Lord of the Rings films in particular are such a big part of my life and leading on from the films is how I discovered the books and read the books and just fell in love even more deeply with Middle Earth itself and so to have this is fantastic. It's been on my wish list for so long and I genuinely can't believe that Nathan bought this for me so thank you so so much Nathan. It is going to take pride of place on my Tolkien bookshelf. It is one that I will just be pouring through here and there when I can because there's going to be a lot of information but look at this you guys. Isn't this just so so pretty? So yeah it just says that there is hundreds of maps and diagrams that show the journeys of the principal characters day by day including all the battles and key locations of the first, second and third ages, plans and descriptions of castles, buildings and distinctive landforms which accompany thematic maps describing climate, vegetation, languages and population throughout the history of Middle Earth. Now if you're not a Tolkien fan this probably won't appeal to you but this has me so excited. I love learning as much as I can about Middle Earth itself and so yeah this is just one that I am so excited to get to. Can't wait to pour through it as I mentioned and a massive thank you once again Nathan for adding this one to my collection because it genuinely means the world and yeah I'm so happy to finally own this one. The next book I bought is Six Tudor Queens Catherine Howard The Tainted Queen by Alison Weir. I'm so happy to own this book guys because it means that I have finally completed my Six Tudor Queens collection. Now I read the first book last year I want to say maybe it was even earlier than that but I fell in love with Alison Weir's writing style and the way that Catherine of Aragon's story was told and then I bought the second book which focuses on Anne Boleyn but then I think I got the sixth book because that had just recently come out in paperback then I got the fourth book and then the third book now the fifth book so I bought them all in a very strange order but I'm so happy to now have all of the books in this collection in case you couldn't tell this set of books focuses on Henry VIII's six wives and what I love is that Alison Weir has actually given the women a voice in these books now when you think of the Tudor era of course Henry VIII pops into your head. He was a ruthless king that obviously had a few wives and his was a time of a lot of reform. So it's a very important time in history but unfortunately we don't know a lot about the women who were queens and were expected to rule alongside him. Now as I mentioned I read the first book last year or earlier but for some reason at the start of July I was drawn to the second book which as I mentioned focuses on Anne Boleyn. I started reading that book you guys and I kid you not I could not put it down. I read the whole thing in about two or three days whilst I was on holiday. The vlog for that is live so if you would like to check that out I will leave it linked up above and down below for you guys but spoiler alert for that I guess I absolutely loved it. So I did come back home and when I got home I decided to dive into the third book which focuses on Jane Seymour and once again flew through that one absolutely loved it and have now added the fourth book onto my September TBR and so it's only now 
natural that I bought the fifth book so that I can read this one hopefully in November and as I mentioned complete my collection because this is a series that I've just fallen in love with. Alison Weir is a historian so these books are as accurate as they could possibly be with them being historical fiction but you essentially follow the women as children as they start growing up and getting into court life and as they are approached by Henry VIII and as he is courting them up until the point where their part in the story ends. It is such an accessible way to learn more about the Tudor dynasty. I personally loved it as I said. It is a very popular series for good reason and Catherine Howard is definitely the most promiscuous wife. She is one that was very young and I think was very misunderstood and was easily manipulated. So I am definitely looking forward to reading her story, learning more about her and seeing what her life was like because I can't imagine it was easy as is the case with all of the lives of these women but I feel like it is important that their stories be told and so yes this is top priority for me next month. So glad to have this one and this is actually a Waterstones exclusive edition which features an essay called Life and the Maiden's Daughter. So I will be reading that one after I finish it. I love learning as much as I can about these women in particular especially if it's written by Alison Weir because as I mentioned her writing is just so accessible. It's not too dense at all. You can definitely follow along with what is happening and we do have timelines, we have family trees, we have some references at the back as well and also a list of the character names as well or the people's names as I should say because they were real people or most of them at least. The next book that I bought was a pre-order but it did arrive before all of the other boxes so I have unboxed this one in a vlog but it is He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan which is the sequel to She Who Became the Sun. This once again is another Waterstones exclusive edition. It is beautiful you guys. It has stunning stenciled edges and I actually love that the gold detailing carries on to these stenciled edges as well. It is also signed by the author which is very exciting and unfortunately I don't have the exclusive edition of the first book to match but when I saw this one of course I had to pre-order it. It's one that I was going to buy anyway so I might as well have a pretty edition and I'm so happy that I did because it's so much more beautiful in person and this is actually a set of books that I am dying to read. Now I do have the first book here to show you just because it's easier to talk about this book as this one is the sequel. Now as I mentioned I haven't read this one but when it came out it got so much hype. It is such a popular book and I am so excited to dive into it. There isn't a little snippet for me to read unfortunately so I will just read you the synopsis. It says in a famine stricken village on a dusty yellow plain a seer shows two children their fates. For the boy greatness, for the girl nothingness. In 1345 China lies under harsh Mongol rule. For the starving peasants of the central plains greatness is only found in stories. The Zhu family is mystified as to how Zhu Chongba, their eighth born son, will achieve his lofty future. But for a daughter, no matter how clever or capable, an early death would be no surprise. Yet when a bandit's attack orphans the two children, it's Zhu Chongba who dies. Desperate to survive, his sister steals his identity to enter a monastery. There, disguised as a male novice, Zhu learns she can be ruthless to avoid her fate. But when her sanctuary is destroyed, Zhu is cast back into the war-torn world. To change her ending, there's only one thing she can do. Claim her brother's great destiny as her own. Doesn't that just sound great, you guys? Kiwi has made an appearance, so apologies if you can see her at any point. But as I mentioned, I really do want to prioritise this book. I feel like I'm going to really enjoy it. And of course, now I do have the sequel, I will hopefully read them back to back and just fall in love with this world. But look at how stunning they are together, guys. I am really sad that I don't have an exclusive edition of the first one, but it's fine. We move. Very glad to have an exclusive edition of the second book, though, and hopefully I can start this series this year. If not, it will definitely be getting read in 2024. If you've read these, please do leave me your spoiler-free thoughts down below. I would love to hear some initial thoughts about them, just because I feel like sometimes it's a bit daunting diving into a new fantasy world, especially if the second book is out as well. And so if I'm able to chat about it with you guys, it will make me even more excited and will hopefully make it a less daunting task. And then the last two books I have to show you are both from Illumicray. These are the July and the August book. The July book did come a bit later which is why it's in this haul but that one is the Jassad Air by Sada Hashem. This has me so excited you guys. It is an Egyptian mythology inspired world and that's all I need to know essentially because for those of you who don't know I have such a 
deep love for ancient Egypt and I take every opportunity I can to learn about it. One of my earliest memories is actually completing a school project in either year three or year four so I would have been about six, seven, eight years old and I got given a country to focus on and of course I chose Egypt. Now I did so much research for that, it was honestly one of my best works and that kind of kick-started my love for ancient Egypt. Now I actually had no idea that this was a book that was coming out so when I opened it in my Illumicrate unboxing I was genuinely blown away. I will leave that linked up above and down below if you want to check it out but my reaction to it was so funny because I was genuinely so excited and I'm actually planning on reading this one in a specific vlog where I read books inspired by Egypt or set in Egypt because I am going to Egypt myself next year which is so exciting. I genuinely can't believe it and so I thought it would be nice to film a little vlog and reading some books set in Egypt to kind of get prepared for that so that is definitely when I will be getting to this one but this is another war-torn world in a fantasy setting where 10 years ago the kingdom of Jassad burned and our main character Sylvia is the only living heir now is what I can gather but she has gone into hiding. One day though when a group of rebels attack the village that she is staying at she unleashes her magic and so of course she captures all of their attention and she ends up having to make a deal with her greatest enemy and it just says soon Sylvia will have to choose between the life she wants and the one she left behind the Scorched Kingdom is rising and it needs a queen. I don't really want to know too much more than that diving in. I feel like this is one where I'm just going to pick up and fall into and hopefully love. But I'm very glad that it was an Illumicrate pick. It is a stunning book that of course looks amazing on my shelves. But yeah, it's one that I'm so excited to get to. It won't be until next year, but I'm very glad to own it now. And I can't wait to film that vlog for you guys either. And then we have the latest book from Illumicrate, which is Zara by S.J. Jones and I believe that this is the first book in the Guardians of the Dawn series. This one does have a little snippet so I'll just read you that. It says step into a stunning world of forbidden magic, romance and adventure from the author of New York Times best-selling Winter Song. All I know about this one is that magic is forbidden in the world. Of course our main character has some magic abilities that she needs to keep hidden and so she finds herself coming into contact with a magical resistance organization called the Guardians of the Dawn. Now there's actually a plague in here and it seems to be turning all of the magicians into monsters and so as I'm in character and I'm guessing this organization look further into it it brings them face to face with a darkness that is even more evil than they first thought. Hopefully I've summed that up well as I mentioned I've not read it but that is just what I've gathered from reading the synopsis for my Illumicrate unboxing which again I will leave linked up above and down below if you want to check it out but this is once again a beautiful edition. I am very excited to read it however again it won't be before the end of the year now. Just because from the cover alone I feel like it's going to be a very summery book so definitely not the vibes I want for the rest of the months in the year but I am excited to read it nonetheless. I haven't really looked at any reviews for it or seen anything about it to be honest with you guys so this may be another one that I dive into without really knowing anything but it's a beautiful edition that I will happily be adding to my shelves. So there we have it you guys, these are all of the books that I have added to my collection this month. As I've mentioned though, there are definitely a few more books that I will be hauling, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the unboxing video coming soon, but yeah, I'm very excited for all of these. Thank you once again to Nathan for the Atlas of Middle Earth, I cannot wait to pour through it and learn even more about a world that I already love. Very happy to be completing my Six Tudor Queen series as I've mentioned, and yeah, I've also hauled some beautiful books as well. If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and leave me a crown emoji down in the comments. How could I not choose that emoji, you guys? The Six Tudor Queens are iconic figures in history and we love to see them represented. So if you are still here but don't have anything in particular that you would like to say, please go ahead and leave me the crown emoji down below. As well as that, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me. But that is it for me today, guys. Thank you once again for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Goodbye!